What is going on guys? We are back and today we're going to be starting a brand new series called Surviving with Immersive Engineering in which I play through Minecraft with the mod Immersive Engineering and just try and help you guys learn and have fun along the way. So I've already got my own little startup area right here ready to go so that we don't have to do the typical boring Minecraft punch and trees in the first video because I want to jump right into the mod and unfortunately there is a little bit more work I need to do before I can jump in to making the coke oven which is going to be the first thing we do today. Uh, right now I am cooking down some clay into bricks but I do need to start another furnace just because we're going to have to cook down a lot of bricks and I really don't want to leave that to one furnace right now. And then I also am going to have to get some coal which is the main reason that I came up onto this kind of like stony plateau area. It is not because I like how it looks, I think it looks disgusting. It's really gray because it's a stony plateau. So <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm going to stay here for very long but it's going to be really nice starting out just because. I have access to stone, of course, and uh, because I have access to coal. Now, one thing that's important is I do not want to use too many bricks. So right now we're looking at the Immersive Engineering tab in NEI. Uh, there are a couple other mods I'm going to use when I'm playing, such as Journey Maps, as you can see in the upper right-hand corner, uh, NEI. Um, all that stuff will be listed in the description, though. There's probably seven or eight mods if you guys want to play along that you should download. And other than that, uh, the seed will be in the description. And I don't really know if you'd want to start with the seed though, because I did spawn in a pit being attacked, so uh, that was a little bit rough. But uh, like I said, the seed will be down there, and I am playing on hard difficulty, so uh, I think what we should do now is... Hello, Mr. Sheep. Hello. I killed your friends to make this bed. Hello. Um, but we do need to take a look at the Coke oven. So, uh, they come in bricks that come in sets of two, and it is going to require one sandstone four bricks and four clay for two we need 27 because it's a three by three by three and it's actually filled up in the center and that means that we're actually going to need to make 28 bricks have one left over which means we need to do this recipe 14 times which means we are going to need uh, 14 times four for the sandstone or yeah 14 times four for the sandstone so we only need 14 sandstone and then we're going to need 56 bricks and 56 clay so right now we're going to be cooking down so that'll make 32 and I think if we're going to have that 32 that'll be more than enough. And there we go. So now we got to make this sandstone. Uh, I do have more sand than necessary and what we can start doing is start mining some of this coal because obviously once we have the coke oven what we're trying to get is creosote and the main reason is because we need to make treated wood which is really crucial to starting out when it comes to using a water wheel, which is a really easy way to get power. Um, and it's going to take a while for us to get the creosote, and we also need coal for the coke oven to get the creosote. So although it's not really going to be expensive to get the creosote, it's going to take a long time. So I'm going to have to go off camera, and I can use that time to gather resources for the water wheel project. But before that, we actually need to get the coke oven made. So... I'm going to split these over into this one right here, and I guess we can start throwing the stuff in here. All right, you know what? It's not... I keep forgetting that this isn't going to hold this stuff because it's not the uh, other crafting bench. Oh, you know what? We need some more coal in here. Um, but yeah, so pretty much with this series, I'm really excited to play with Immersive Engineering because I think it is one of the greatest mods ever. It is super realistic, and yes, to those of you that do know, I am a little bit biased because I'm studying to be an engineer right now, so I'm biased to the Immersive Engineering mod. Uh, if you like magic mods, it might not be your thing, but I think most people would probably enjoy this mod. Even though if we take a look back at the uh, Immersive Engineering stuff, as you can see there's only 8 pages in here. Initial Minecraft stuff goes to page 6, but... Uh, immersive engineering starts here and there actually doesn't seem to be that much of it but most of it is actually multi-block stuff that you make later in the game that's really expensive so uh, when you get into that stuff that's when you really start delving into the mod so this stuff we're really just brushing on the surface here um, we're waiting on four more bricks or it should only be four more bricks for these to cook down so we only need I think that should be good yep two and two so we should be good there and then we'll have more than enough clay and then I can actually start cooking down some more food because I did have to kill some animals to survive. I had a rough time getting out of the initial pit. I got blown up on by a creeper and was being chased by some zombies and skeletons. So that was less than optimal. But it looks like we got our bricks there. And now we can start out. So, oh, you know what? We are short one. Whoops. I said 56, but then I was thinking 
54 for some reason. So we gotta like gotta wait for one more to cook down, and then we can go. <laughs> okay, there we go. So split it into 14. Gonna have two more bricks than necessary, or two more um, sandstone than necessary. And there we go, 28. Should be more than enough. So when you're setting this up, you're going to use a three by three by three, and I guess I can just put it right here. And unlike other things you might have used that are multi-block structures, this one is actually filled up in the center completely. So uh, we put this down, and there we go. And then we actually need to get the immersive engineering hammer. Whoops. So we go through here. Probably be easier, honestly, to just type in uh, hammer rather than look for it in here. But here we go, engineer's hammer. So we actually need some iron. It looks like I'm going to have to go off and get some iron and string. And then we will jump back and we can start making this and get the creosote rock in. And then we will be good to go with getting our power. Okay, guys, so we are back at our little starter area. And I have just finished cooking up all of the good stuff that we got while I was doing some caving. So we got 27 copper and 28 iron and two redstone i actually got that from killing a witch when i came back here and that is just the perfect amount of redstone for what we're doing today so i have finished making the coke oven and we now have 30 creosote oil which is just enough because you're going to need uh, a couple buckets of creosote to make these treated wood planks and then you're going to use those to make the water wheels so what we can do is just make some buckets over here and start pulling it out i guess we actually only need one it's going to be a little bit slower but we can slowly pull it out. And I think mine's a little bit glitched because it's not going down, but we should be able to get three creosote buckets from that. And I actually need to turn this wood into planks so that we can use it. And you just surround it with that, and then it gives you the bucket back, and then we can just throw it back in there, get it out, and do it all over again. And we'll do that for all three of them because this is really all that we're going to need uh, creosote for. And once we have that, we can start working on making the kinetic dynamo which is what's going to get power and we can throw that in yet yeah, none left um, so we're gonna have to use this to move some water later for the water wheel uh, but what we need to do to start is to actually make the water wheel because it's got a lot of different parts to it uh, it might seem a little complicated but it really isn't it's pretty simple so you need four of these segments and then one treated wood plank uh, so it's pretty much just making these segments which take three treated wood planks and four treated wood sticks which are just made like normal sticks so each one is going to take four so right there that is what we're going to need whoops there there we go okay so then these are going to go like this and like this and we got to fill this up yeah it looks like we'll have just enough to finish this off and then we got to make the actual water wheel itself now, water wheels aren't the most effective way of generating power just because uh, they can be maximized to generate roughly 30 RF per tick, and that is if you have water flowing in the perfect way over them, which is what we're going to do today. And it actually doesn't even look that great. It doesn't look like a normal water wheel, um, but it's perfectly fine. Uh, there are better ways to generate power, and we're going to do those later, uh, like the diesel generators, but um, for now, we'll stick with the water wheel. And now we need to still do some more crafting because we need to make the kinetic dynamo. And here's where the two redstone come in, and we also need copper wire coil, which uses some of this low voltage wire coil. And this is why I was saying copper is so important, uh, because we need four copper ingots and one stick to make four low voltage cables. So we're gonna need a lot of sticks for this. I think 12 should be enough. And obviously you're gonna need to do eight for that and surround one piece of iron which is going to get you this copper wire coil and then we throw that in there with the two redstone and the iron and we get the kinetic dynamo so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make some of that extra low voltage cable just for wiring this kinetic dynamo to something and we're actually going to wire it to this external heater and what we can do with this is place it down give it power and then put furnaces around it and the furnaces will cook stuff with the power instead of using the uh, coal and then we can use the coal for the coke oven for making more water wheels until we're content with having enough water wheels that we have enough power so we can do that and it's pretty much it's kind of like using a redstone furnace but it's still using a regular furnace that just gets power from somewhere else so it'll be nice but the only problem is right now we don't really have anywhere that's a nice place to put a water wheel so i'm just going to put it over here for now 
and we can uh, build around it. Uh, off camera after this episode, I might make a little bit of a shack up here that we can build onto. But for now, we'll just throw the water wheel here so I can show you guys the general concept of the water wheel and how you want to power it. So I'm going to dig out a little kind of like a trough right here where we can put the water wheel in. And it's actually surprisingly large, so I'm going to have to uh, build up a little bit here. So what you do is we'll build up, I guess we can build up, let's try doing three. Actually, you know what, we're only going to need to do two. So we'll put the kinetic dynamo down, and what you do with this is you actually attach the water wheel to it. And you can attach multiple water wheels to each one, uh, I believe it's three. So you throw it on there and it looks really big. That's because it's got a radius of three blocks. So the center block and then out one and then out one. Uh, so technically it's five blocks across and then there's this little like stub here that it's not really a block. You can see the block ends right here. So these can pass through. So like it won't have any issue if this kind of clips through this stone block right here. Um, but the best way to have water flowing around it is starting at the very top center, flowing all the way around and then it gets down here and flows under it too. So that's the best way to get power from it so we kind of have to design this with that idea in mind uh, so if we were to have three here obviously we just need to make it wider but we kind of have to build accordingly so the kinetic dynamo doesn't need this behind it anymore and you can't even access the UI for the kinetic dynamo so feel free to right click on it or do whatever you want and we're just gonna build up here and start placing this down so that we can uh, direct the water whichever way we want it to go. So we just want to make sure that it's able to flow around this and stay on the water wheel. I don't really want it spilling out, so I'm trying to be minimalist with how I'm putting these down. And I know it's going to look bad, but I just want you guys to have a general idea of how it's going to work. And later on off camera, when I'm not really, you know, trying to be time cautious, I will go through and actually alter the way it looks and make it look nicer. So once you get down here, you can see that these come in contact with the ground. So we're going to have to go one block deeper. So we're going to want to mine this one away and get rid of this right here. And it can drop down through this block right here. And we're going to want to do the same over here for this one. And then we got to get rid of this block in the center. And we can put this back down there. And then we just got to mine this block out right here. And I think that should be good for the far side. And then we got to do that again for this side right over here. So we can just actually come up here, use this like a stairway and build across. So you can put one back here just so that it doesn't spill out over the back. And looks like we are out of cobble. It's also becoming nighttime, so we're gonna have to be careful because mobs spawn up here like no tomorrow. They just spawn like crazy. So one thing that's going to be a little bit annoying is I'm not going to have like really broken flying with this eventually. So I'm going to have to be uh, a little weary of what I'm building because it's going to take a little bit longer. But I think right now this should be good. This should work. And we can go grab a bucket of water, sleep, and then see that it is all good to go. And if that is, then we can make the external heater, which is similar to making the kinetic dynamo. And then we can start smelting without using any coal. So let's see that the water flows correctly. I don't want it spilling out anywhere. Yes, it does. You can see that the water wheel starts spinning. Oh my gosh, that just made me jump. I'll leave you over there, buddy, because you're just going to sit there. So it's spinning. It should come all the way down here. Yep. So that is good. We can put a block right there and right here. And I know, yes, the setup does look disgusting. Like I said, it looks really, really gross. Um, I'm just going to try and clean it up a little bit so it doesn't look as atrocious. So this is the final setup for an optimized water wheel. Obviously you would have three attached to this and that would generate 90 RF per tick. But now what we need to do is take both of these furnaces and we can break them and then we can come over here and we can start making the external heater. So we're going to have to make two more sets of these copper wires. And that's because I want to save these four for actually wiring them. And then we need copper, iron, ooh, you know what? And it looks like we need one more redstone, unfortunately, which I do not have right now. So uh, what I can show you guys, actually, you know what? I'll go off camera right now. I will get the redstone. We will come back, and then we will start uh, working on hooking that up and finish off there. 
Okay guys, so we are back and I actually just ran into a spider spawner. As you can see, I got some diamond horse armor, some saddles, and a music disc. Uh, it's actually right at the bottom of this little mine shaft right here. I mined straight into it and uh, that stuff is actually really not useful at all to me. I don't think I'll ever use it through this entire series, but what is useful is the chest that I got in there because I pretty much just threw it down here for some extra storage space. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it was just like a nice little surprise for me. But now we have the stuff that we need to finish making the external heater. So we will go back to the immersive engineering and we can finish this guy up. So we need to finish making the coil, throw that down in the center, get some redstone, iron at each of the corners, and then copper. So we now have the external heater and we can just throw this down. We'll throw it down in line with this over here and you'll see why in a second. But I will throw it down, um, We'll just say right up here. We want to elevate it one so we can maximize the amount of furnaces that we can put around it. And now we need to make one more thing. We need to make this low voltage wire connector. And that's how we're going to run things from one of these to the other. So if we took out some wire right now and we just wanted to connect it from these, we could like click on that and try and click on that and it wouldn't work at all. But if we come over here and we look at the recipe for this, we need to actually make some hardened clay which is why it's good that we have some leftover clay. Where'd you go? There it is. So we actually don't need that much. We need four pieces and that makes eight of the low voltage connectors. So we're only gonna need to pretty much make four pieces. So we're gonna throw down the furnaces. Might as well throw them down over here right now just because uh, they'll be down here in a minute or two. And the last one down right there. Put two in that so we're going relatively fast, but what we're going to do is we're essentially going to be connecting power that is in this dynamo right now and running it over here. And I really, really like the way the wires work in this. And I think you guys will see why in a second. I think you can make them look really cool. Um, I use them actually for decoration in one of my previous series uh, or current uh, series that's currently going on um, at my initial base. And I really like the way they looked. So now that these are finished, we can grab these, go back over and finish crafting this. And it looks like we're going to have just enough copper to make the connectors. So now you take these guys and you're just gonna click it on here and you're gonna click it on here and you're gonna right click with the cable and, or the coil and it's gonna say linking from and give you the coordinates and then you're gonna click over here and you can see now that it is attached to this and I believe this should be giving these power. Um, my thing's being a little bit glitchy right now. I do have Optifine installed, but I don't think I'm gonna keep it installed just because it seems to mess with the UIs but we should be able to cook stuff now if we throw it in these without them actually having anything in them. So I guess we can just test that out with cobblestone. Um, obviously they need to let the coal run out first, but they should be able to cook it. It should be transferring power um, from each one of these. So you can see, oh, you know, we might actually need to change the way that this is connected um, over here, I think. So when you do break this, it will drop the low voltage connector and actually the wire itself. So you can connect it to the top up there. And I think this might be obstructing the view. No, it's not. Okay, awesome. So this should be getting power right now and running it over, but it doesn't seem like it is. Hmm. You know what? Let's go in. Let me see this hammer. There we go. So I forgot, you actually need to change which way that this is accepting. So now it is accepting power. The problem is it's not getting enough power to effectively run both of these or enough heat to run them. So we would need to add another water wheel to actually get this one running, but we can just break it for now. And this one should be running relatively consistently. Um, you can see it's flickering on and off. So if we were to put two other water wheels here, it should work pretty effectively. But like I said, they're not the most effective way of, of generating power. So eventually we will have better power sources, but for now we'll probably make a bunch of these. Uh, there are also other ways. I believe there is the uh, thermodynamic generator or the thermoelectric generator, which is right here, which revolves around putting uh, water on some of its sides and lava on some of the other sides to generate power just based on the heat difference. Um, that's another really easy one to start out with. I prefer the water wheels. But I think we're going to end it there for today, guys. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, that is what I'm here for. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Uh, if you have any suggestions or anything, feel free to post those in the comments too. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys are going to enjoy this series. I really think you will. I'm actually really excited for it. So let me know what you think, and I will talk to you guys later.